swing thoughts. Should we have them? How many should we have? Let's answer all those questions and should they change between different clubs? Hi everybody and welcome back to Alex Elliott Golf and welcome to the channel if you're a brand new viewer. Don't forget to subscribe and give all this content a thumbs up. Swing thoughts, should we have them? Now, in my opinion, yes we should. Now, I also believe that they should differ between clubs because our driver swing is totally different to our iron swing. So, let's firstly talk about how I come to my swing thoughts with my driver. Now, I have two different ways of thinking about my swing thoughts. I like to have two. And everybody that comes to me, we always talk about a backswing thought and then a trigger thought to help them pull the trigger and hit the shot. And hopefully those swing thoughts help produce a reliable ball flight. And that's the most important thing. You've got to make sure those swing thoughts produce a reliable ball flight. Now, when you're out on the range before you play, this is where it's key. Try different swing thoughts. Try the things that your coach said and hopefully they produce a reliable ball flight. And really be aware of what ball flight that's going to give you because if you stand there and try to produce a swing thought but you don't know what ball flight is going to come out, it's then very, very hard to play golf. And I see a lot of the time when, when you talk about the pros on tour, they very often come off and go, well, I didn't play that good but I just got it round. They find a swing thought that works and allows them to get a ball flight to get the golf ball round the golf course not a swing thought and a feeling that gives them a left and right ball flight and doesn't know where the ball goes. So for me here, let's talk about how I kind of formulate this in terms of my pre-shot routine. My feeling with the driver is feeling that I get wide on the way back and I've got to feel like I hit a high fee on the way through. So my path, I want to feel is a little bit left to do that. I get a little bit stuck underneath the golf ball, which is why I feel that feeling. So in my practice swings, I have two practice swings here. One, wide on the way back, left on the way through, produce that fade. And then my second swing is actually hitting a shot. So I'd stand over this golf ball now and actually pitch the shot, pitch the shot tracer and hit it wide, left on the way through. Feel it, actually have that feeling, touch that feeling, picture it and allow it now to take its course and be reactive over the golf ball. Let's hit this one now. Now with the iron, we spoke about swing thoughts differing. Now, like I wanted to say before, it's very, very important that they do. We've got two different swings. One we hit on the up with the driver, or we tend to try and hit it on the up if we want to try and hit it exactly how we'd like to, or then we want to hit one on the down with the iron. So well, how does my swing thoughts change? So before I wanted to feel wide, then left through the golf ball. Now, the feeling that I have now with my irons is I really feel like I want to be low through the ball. And what that does, that really gives me that feeling of trying to be hands of the golf ball, but being low and bruising of that turf with a downward hit. Again, I swing, my swing thoughts are definitely linked because I get very underneath the golf ball as a bad shot. So how have I come to that again? So the first swing thought stopped me doing that, feeling left through the golf ball with the driver. And how do I do that with the iron now? I feel that I keep my hands low through the ball and that really gives me a good ball flight and a reliable ball flight out on the golf course. Now, how you formulate these is very important like we said. You've got to do this in your practice or before you play around the golf and you've got to have clarity over the golf ball. I think a lot of people when they're over the golf ball, they have too many thoughts going through their head. So it could be one, two, maybe six swim thoughts. In, in some instances, actually some lessons who have come to me for the first time, I've actually had upwards of 10. Now. For me here, it's very then hard for you to actually pull the trigger, hit the shot, and actually allow your talent to come through. I definitely believe we've all got a bit of talent. We've just got to unleash it and allow ourselves to display it. If you've got too many swing thoughts, then it's very, very hard to do so. So remember, one back swing thought, one trigger thought, and allow them to change between driver and iron. That's very important. So let's give my iron one a hit now. So low hand through the golf ball and wide on the way back. The moral of the story is today, let's take away swing thoughts as two as a maximum. One for the backswing thought, one for the trigger thought. And definitely allow them to change or slightly vary between an iron and a driver, okay? It's very, very important that you do that. Like we said, they're two different swings and let's have clarity over the golf ball. So just wanted to reiterate here, if I was going to go on the range now, I would hit before round of golf. I'd hit a few different shots with each club or maybe evens or odds, depending what irons I wanted to hit that day. 
But what I'll be really trying to work on there is a swing thought or swing thought that really gives me a reliable ball flight. At the end of the day, whatever reliable ball flight that we have on that day is definitely the way forward to playing some good, consistent golf. Not necessarily the best striking golf every time, but definitely if you can have clarity in terms of your swing thoughts, for me, you're definitely going to perform better and that's going to help lower our handicap. Thank you for watching today's video on Alex Elite Golf. Don't forget to subscribe, give all this content a thumbs up and see you next time.